Hi, this is Edward Awad. In this video, we will introduce photosynthesis and will focus the discussion on the properties of light and the role of biological pigments in capturing solar energy for cells to convert it to chemical energy. Photosynthesis is a fundamental concept in biology and forms the basis of ecological food chains. As you already know, the capture of solar energy by primary producers is at the base of the movement of this energy in food chains. So what is photosynthesis exactly? It's a metabolic process by which light energy from the sun is captured to reduce carbon dioxide into carbohydrates. And in that process, water is oxidized into O2. The overall chemical equation of photosynthesis is for every six molecules of CO2 and six molecules of water, there's the production of one molecule of carbohydrate, which is glucose, and six molecules of oxygen. Photosynthesis occurs in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. In prokaryotes, only cyanobacteria are known to be photosynthetic. Photosynthetic metabolic processes in these prokaryotes take place in the cytoplasm. In eukaryotic cells, photosynthesis occurs inside the chloroplasts and it involves two metabolic pathways, light-dependent reactions and light-independent reactions, or also known as the Calvin cycle. The light-dependent reactions are driven by light energy captured by the green pigment chlorophyll and results in the production of ATP and the reduced electron carrier NADPH. In contrast, the light-independent reactions do not use light directly. Instead, they use the products of the light-dependent reactions, meaning ATP and NADPH, in order to convert carbon dioxide into sugars. Since photosynthesis is dependent on light energy, let's take a look at the properties of light. Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It acts like a particle as well as like a wave. Light particles are known as photons, and each photon has a specific amount of energy. Since light particles behave like a wave, each photon travels in a wave fashion that has a characteristic wavelength. The amount of energy in light is inversely proportional to its wavelength. The longer the wavelength, the lower the amount of energy of light, and vice versa. Electromagnetic waves that are detectable by the human eye are known as the visible light or visible spectrum, and it consists of light of wavelengths between 400 and 700 nanometers. Let's look now at what happens when a photon collides with a molecule. When this collision occurs, one of three things could happen. First, the, fro the photon may bounce off the atoms of the molecule, or the photon may pass through the atoms without colliding with them. And the third option, the photon may collide head-on and its energy absorbed by the atoms of the molecule, and therefore the energy of the photon is acquired by the molecule. When this happens, the electrons that collide with the with the photons and therefore absorb photon energy move to higher energy shells and are said to move from a ground state to an excited state of higher energy. Electrons in excited state due to photon absorption may return to their ground state by emitting the absorbed energy back as lower energy photons. This characteristic forms the basis of fluorescence. Pigments are molecules that selectively absorb certain wavelengths, mostly in the visible range. In addition, wavelengths that are not absorbed are reflected as a result of this wavelength selective absorption. Depending on the reflected wavelength, pigment color is dependent on the wavelength they reflect. For example, a blue pigment absorbs red and green, but does not absorb blue color and it is therefore reflected, giving the pigment its characteristic blue color. This physical property of pigments differs from fluorescence, in which a fluorescent material absorbs energy from photons 
and emits this energy back as light. Pigments play a crucial role in photosynthesis, and several types of pigments are known to absorb light energy and use it in the process of photosynthesis. Important photosynthetic pigments include the green pigment chlorophylls and the accessory pigments known as carotenoids, such, such as this beta-carotene shown here. Let's look at chlorophyll first. Plants have two predominant types of chlorophyll, known as chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Both chlorophyll pigments consist of a porphyrin-like ring, indicated in green here, and a long hydrocarbon tail. Porphyrin is an important component of hemoglobin, consisting of a structure very similar to the one found in chlorophyll. One of the main differences between hemoglobin, porphyrin, and chlorophyll porphyrin is that hemoglobin has iron in the center, while chlorophyll has magnesium in the center of its porphyrin ring. Both chlorophyll A and B absorb blue and red wavelengths which are near the ends of the visible spectrum. If we plot the absorbance values of different wavelengths by chlorophyll A and B, we obtain this graph. This plot is known as absorption spectrum. As you can see, the peak values for both types of chlorophyll are in the blue and the red wavelengths of the visible spectrum. Green is not absorbed and is reflected back, giving these pigments their distinctive green color. If we plot the rate of photosynthesis or any biological activity directly related to photosynthesis against wavelength, we get what we call an action spectrum. This plot has characteristically two peaks, one corresponding to blue light and the other to red light. And when we superimpose the action spectrum and the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A and B, we can clearly see that the blue and red lights are directly responsible for photosynthetic activities in organisms. In some plants, accessory pigments, such as carotenoids, absorb wavelengths between red and blue and transfer that energy to chlorophyll, while other pigments, such as flavonoids, protect chlorophyll and other plant molecules from destructive radiation by absorbing high-energy UV light. In plants, chlorophyll is found in the thylakoid membranes of chloroplasts. If we zoom in on the membrane of these thylakoids, we see that chlorophyll molecules are embedded within a complex system of proteins and other pigments that is collectively known as photosystem. And the membrane of each thylakoid is packed with these photosystems. In the thylakoid membrane, each photosystem unit comprises 200 to 300 chlorophyll molecules and accessory pigments that are complex with membrane proteins. A typical photosystem consists of two main parts. The antenna complex, which is the light harvesting component of a photosystem, and the reaction center, which is the part of the photosystem that converts light energy into chemical energy. A pigment enters an excited state when it absorbs a photon. Excited state is unstable, and the molecule may return to the ground state, emitting heat light energy as fluorescence. But if fluorescence does not occur, the pigment molecule may pass some of the absorbed energy to other pigment molecules. This process of energy transfer between pigment molecules is known as resonance. This is what happens in the antenna complex where light energy of different wavelengths is harvested by transferring light energy between pigment molecules, thus harvesting the energy from different wavelengths. Harvested light energy by the antenna complex is channeled to the reaction center of a photosystem. In plants, the pigment molecule in the reaction center is always a molecule of chlorophyll A. A chlorophyll molecule converts light energy into chemical energy by absorbing light energy and transforming it into an excited electron. This excited electron is then transferred to other molecules that we call electron acceptors. In other words, chlorophyll A becomes a highly reducing agent and participates in redox reactions.